Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to the Backbrace channel for programming. My name is Amir and in this video I will be demonstrating how to connect backend server to a front-end UI. Specifically we will be using Django which is a popular Python web framework for the backend and React.js which is also a powerful JavaScript library but for the front-end. This is an older video, but it's part of a longer series that covers the entire app development process. Connecting the backend and frontend is a crucial step in creating fully-fledged apps, especially if you're a full-stack developer. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more programming tutorials like this one. Now with that out of the way, let's get started. So some of the reasons to choose React was Django, that both React and Django are the most popular libraries and frameworks in their respective domains. React's SPA or single page application optimization plus Django's powerful features make it even better. So as we will see now that both Django and React parts will be handled separately and this results in cleaner and clear interface between front-end and back-end logic and functions. Also it's easy to deploy either the front-end part or the back-end part without redeploying the other. So you can uh, deploy the front-end without needing to deploy the back-end or the opposite. Okay and now we need to work on two parts. So the back-end where we're going to create our API using Django REST and the front end where we will interact directly with the API using React.js. So we're going to create a simple project to write employee's name and his department in the back end. That's all it is. And then we're going to connect React as our main front end to Django server to fetch data and display it on our React application. So let me create a folder. I will call it um, react-django and let's open it with git bash tool. And in this project I will work in virtual environment. So I will use pipnv. And if you don't have it, you can pip install pipnv like that. Hit enter and it will be installed immediately. Then once that done, uh, we will need a couple of packages. So we will need Django REST framework package and um, also we'll need Django course headers. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, not using pip, but pip env. Install Django REST um, framework. And Django REST framework is just a toolkit to build our API. And also later we will install Django course headers um, just to handle the server headers required for course. Course, if I remember correctly, stands for cross-origin um, resource sharing, uh, but I'm not sure. And this is to add the course headers, which allows your API to be accessed on any other domain. So this is the first package that um, we're installing, Django REST framework. Once this is done, we will go ahead and um, install the course headers. Okay, perfect. So let's go ahead and pip env install Django, Django dash uh, course dash headers. And this won't install it globally on your system, but only in your project, in your virtual environment. All right, perfect. So let's clear the terminal. All right, so let's go ahead and create a Django project. So Django admin um, start project and we'll call it project just for simplicity. All right, let's go ahead and enter project. Um, project and inside we should have um, another project folder and manage.py so Python manage.py start app and we will call it app simply all right perfect so um, let's go ahead and open that with visual studio code so let's go ahead and start working on the models.py so here we're going to have our database for our project we'll have two fields only employee name and department so let's create a class so I will call it react and uh, models.model 
and the first field is employee this will be equal to models dot to our field with maximum length of 30 and the second field is department you can increase it if you want but 200 is very reasonable for a department's name. Now let's create a file called serializer and we will create it inside our main app. So uh, just serializer.py. And serializers in general are basically used to convert complex data to native Python data types, which can then be easily rendered into JSON, uh, which we're going to use in React uh, on the client side. So inside Serializer, I want to import from rest underscore framework, um, import serializers, then from um, models in the current directory, I want to import everything because there live our database. And I want to create a class called react serializer. create a meta class model is equal to react and our fields equal to inside a list employee and department so this is serializer let's uh, save that file let's close it now let's go to views.py and here inside views.py, uh, we will create our methods. So let's go ahead and import first our packages. So from rest framework dot views, I want to import the API view. From current directory models, import that. Um, this all right and from rest framework dot response I want to imp import response um, serializer I want also to import everything and I have a typo here frame uh, work okay and let's create our main class so class I will call it react view and our main parameter is the API um, the API um, class main class that we have imported from rest frameworks dot views okay and here I want to create two methods only the get and post method so get self as first parameter and request of course and let's declare a variable we'll call it output and output will be equal to a list and inside that list I have a dictionary then first key is employee and is set to a value of output dot employee okay and also I need a second key which will be the department our second field and this will be set to output dot department and here I want to use a for loop so for each output so for output in react dot objects dot all okay I want to return response uh, passing the output inside as our main argument all right, so this is just simply to display the output, um, the employee and the department after invoking the get method. The second method is the post. So post also will take self and request. And let's um, declare a variable called serializer, which will be equal to, and here the data will be equal to request dot data 
and I want to have a condition. So I will say if serializer dot is valid, setting a parameter of raise exception, uh, raise exception, and we'll set it to true. So if serializer is valid, then we will save it. So serializer dot save, and we will return response. Um, with the data so um, serializer dot data so in this post method what we did is we have saved the data by passing the data to react serializer method all right now it's time to define the endpoint of um, the API which is the URL where our client will head to consume data from the server using react and it's generally the place where the resources like the database live so let's go ahead to URLs um, inside our main project here and let's make some configuration steps so here I need include also from django.com.urls I want to import URL also from app dot views I need to import everything all right and I need um, a path or a main route so path I'm just an empty um, empty string and I want react view as underscore view method and with the name of just anything you can do anything so by writing this line we have actually set the local host with the port 8000 which is um, the default port for Django to be the endpoint for our react view class so this is what we did here now there are some few changes in settings.py so let's go to settings.py and the first thing we need to do is we need uh, to add in installed apps our main application also I want to add rest framework and course headers so course headers I also want to go to the middleware uh, list here and I want to add course headers dot middleware dot course um, middleware and also let's create a dictionary so let's put here below so we will call it rest underscore framework and say uh, default in capital letters default permission classes and this will be set to a list and inside here in uh, small letters say rest underscore framework dot permissions dot allow any and this would be very important because we're going to work with um, with react so we will need this in order to not block the react framework from interacting with Django okay also I want to assign a variable we'll call it course underscore origin allow all we'll set it to true okay perfect just a small point about the course headers package that we have installed and imported that this package is used to tell the browser that um, our web application is running at one origin okay and we will need to access our backend resources from a different origin in this case in our case here in this tutorial from react this will be very useful if you will have more interactivity on your react um, application so you will enter the name of the employee and the department and you will hit submit uh, we won't do this now but I wanted to write it so you can upgrade this application and add more functionalities to it so this is for more interactivity on the browser itself to allow users to enter their names and department names so just uh, be careful um, in the serializer.py it's serializers with an s not serializer okay I forgot an s all right so let's go ahead and open our integrated terminal Python um, manage.py so we're going to make migrations now okay and let's go ahead and migrate so 
migrate okay cool and let's create super user so uh, create super user back back at mail dot XYZ and password anything one two three four five six that's okay all right so super user created successfully congratulations all right so let's go ahead and run the server python manage.py run server okay localhost port 8000 all right perfect so we have our django rest framework and this is because we have imported this um, Django REST framework package. We have our two fields, employee and department. Um, let's go ahead and type mark as employee, department, accounting department, and post. And you will have here in JSON format, employee mark, department, accounting. Okay, let's have um, a second employee. Let's say, for example, Linda, and she works in human resources. Okay, and if we'll make get, so we'll have our two employees added to our backend server managed by Django. All right, so I will leave this server opened. Now let's go ahead and create our front end side. And to do that, we will need to um, we'll need actually get out of this folder projects. So we have project only okay I wanted to call this backend because we will have backend and front end um, that's okay so project is the backend you know that and now let's go ahead and create react app we'll call it front end right and it's going to take a while so I will pause the video here and I will be back when it's done all right, so we have our React application created. Let's go ahead and enter front end folder. And now we need to install a tool called Axios. Axios is the main tool for connecting the back end with the front end. And all the requests will be sent to the back end to the server with the help of Axios. Without it, there will be no connection between React and Django. So npm install Axios. All right, and let's go ahead and exit front end and open the main folder React Django with Visual Studio Code. So we have our front end and back end. All right, so let's actually uh, close the browser and let's from uh, from inside the folder. Uh, what I want to do is I want to open um, the back end with Bash and the front end I will open it inside Visual Studio Code. So python manage.py uh, run server to run the Django server. Okay here there is no possibility to click on the link so we'll need to do it manually. So let's go to the localhost 127 on port 8000 and we still have the same so we will keep our uh, backend server running in the background meanwhile let's go ahead and work on our um, front end development so you saw a while ago that we will need to work mainly um, with app index and any other component that we might create so first of all let's go ahead and run our um, development server let's go to front end and npm start okay so it's open uh, in the same browser google chrome so we have here our local host on 8000 the back end and we have our um, front end working or uh, listening on port 3000 okay perfect and let's go ahead and work on our app.js so let me just 
clear this out and um, we'll have another div and here we'll say h1 and inside here we'll say for example um, bb tech company so this is one thing i think it's because of the app css um, it's better to be in the middle of the of the page like that it's okay we'll leave it like that we'll make use of app.css that's okay now we'll need to grab the data from the backend server uh, from our django framework these uh, fields employee department with different names uh, mark linda different departments um, we need to grab all of that and render it here in our main application so we have a method called component did mount and this method is called when the component is rendered and i will show you what i mean in a second so let's go ahead and start working let's close that actually you know what i will use class instead of function so let's um, delete all of that and let's delete those two lines also we don't need them and let's import axios from axios then I want to create a class. So this is a class based component. We will call it app and it extends react.component. So we'll create state object and here we'll have details for an empty list. And here I will use the component did mount method. So component did mount okay so let's declare a variable called data all right and i will use axios dot get and here we want to get our backend server so uh, on http colon slash slash localhost port 8000 dot then so here i'm using a promise and here we'll take a response as an argument and we want to return um, data we will assign it to res.data and this dot set state uh, s capital set state and here the details will be set to whatever data um, we will get all right let's have a semicolon here and here below dot catch if any errors so in case of error we'll have an empty object or you can return a message okay but i will leave it empty then below here we want to render so what we want to render well everything basically so we will return and let's have a header uh, header i don't know why i did that header Okay, so we'll say data generated from Django and here let's give it um, one horizontal line. So what we want to do is we want to map each ID for each output and we will use uh, an array method called map. Um, that's why I told you that you'll need to be aware of um, the ES6 classes, array methods. So this dot state dot details which is here above, which is set to data, dot map method. And this will take two parameters. The first is output and the second is the ID. And, and this will return the output that we should see on the screen. So inside here, we will have um, div. I will close that div. Okay. And let's have the name of employee in h2 tag and uh, the department in h3 tag okay so here uh, simply output dot employee and output dot department and let's actually make some changes. So let's have uh, a key here with the ID. Okay. 
and let's have another div around. All right, like this. All right, and it's still red. Why? It's complaining because React is not defined. All right, so let's import React from React. Okay, and save, and there it is. Fantastic. So data generated from Django. We have the names here, Mark Accounting. So let me maximize this. So as you can see, both servers are uh, working simultaneously. This one is for the back end. This one is for the front end. So let's open the terminal just to show you uh, node. Okay, so both are working uh, in the same time. So let's maximize this to see uh, things clearer. We have our employees name, department, name, department, and so on. We don't have the ability, of course, to add user or add employee with his department or her department. But as I told you, you can add this if you want. You can make your research and find out how we can do that, how we can add just an input field with submit button. Uh, two input fields actually any user can interact with our application but the purpose here is I wanted to show you how we can link both uh, using Axios so let's go ahead and um, enter any other name let's say for example Olga department production and we will post okay perfect get request so we have three employees let's go to our front end and let's save or uh, refresh and boom we have Olga in production all right guys so that's it for this video uh, I hope it was useful to you and uh, we have seen many things we have seen how uh, we can work with react alone how we can connect Django with react and how we can work with multiple servers how we can connect the back end to the front end um, yeah, and definitely React is very big and we have just scratched the surface in this video, let me tell you. And I will try to create some projects in the future where we can use uh, React as our front end and Django or FastAPI as our back end and then we can connect them together. All right. So uh, once again, thank you very much for watching. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below and I will see you in the next videos. Take it easy.